This is the living room, right? The walls were gone on the previous slide, so now you're starting to see the sheetrock going up, right? You show, show them all of that. No, can I take it out of this? No, no, leave it, leave it. Sheetrock's going up. Yep, sheetrock, right? This was where the kitchen was, is going to be. And the walls are taken out, so now we have clear way to upstairs. Clear way to upstairs, right? And here's the kitchen, right? And here we go this way. Dining area, right? Dining area right here, okay? Let's go over here for plot of bedrooms. So at that 
point in time, um, we were supposed to actually acquire the property and actually everything closed on March 17th. Now, if anybody remembers, COVID hit, it was literally the 13th, which was that Friday. So we were supposed to close on the following Tuesday. So everybody knows once COVID came, like the lenders fell back. Everybody was tight on the money. Nobody wanted to do anything at that point in time. So we we were now we now had this property that we were still sitting on in contract, but we were like, okay, what should we do next? All right. So one thing that we teach people, one thing you Joe talked about that one thing. Here's this one thing you may want to remember, and that's something that we've learned, in it, and it's this: it's profit is produced that purchase. I'll say that one more time. Profit is produced that purchase. Now what that means is we were able to negotiate the property at such a good number, we still were able to do something further with it. So when, what that means is we had so much equity in the numbers that we ran, that we acquired it, we still were able to do something. So when COVID hit, we looked at the numbers and actually the market started to drop a little bit. And due to the fact that it was just a whole thing of unknown and uncertainty, we said, all right, if we run the numbers properly, we should be able to still wholesale this property again instead of fixing and flipping it. So this was an opportunity for us to use our network um, and, and, and basically put the property out there to other people. So we ended up doing, due to our community, we were able to now find other people in the community and then we wholesaled it. So we got it as a wholesale. Um, Vanessa earned her income. She made 5,000 on that. And then we wholesaled it again so it was like a two wholesales in one. It was a crazy strategy that we just figured we could do. We wholesaled it to another um, investor, and we wholesaled it to them for two fifty. So we actually made fifteen grand on the wholesale side of this bid, this um, property. And then you know after they, they did the ARV, their potential profit they still would make about twenty grand, which they were okay with. And the reason that they were actually okay with that number is because the people we um, wholesaled it to. They were actually had a, had a contract in business as well. So when we showed them the numbers of basically, actually go, go to the slide before Ron, the slide right before this one. So we kind of just showed them. So see those costs in there, the repair costs and the holding costs. They knew that if they got into the property, they wouldn't have to put 60 grand in repairs because of the fact that they had their own construction business and their holding costs they knew would be lower because they were basically using cash to get the property. So some of that 50 grand now is gonna go like into their pocket as profit, and then the same thing with the repair. Some of that money was also, so they was like, okay, you're showing us we can make 20 grand, but when they ran their numbers the way that they knew that they were gonna do it, they knew that they would make more than the 20 grand and everything would be still good. So that's how we kind of moved, up, moved along through the process on that. So we wholesale the property to another investor, and then now they're in actually in the process right here, fixing and flipping it. And again, due to our relationships, we're still able to get here and be inside the property and showcase it to you people to see, hey, look, this is what we're really doing. We still do have connections with people, and it's a great, great relationship. So when you cultivate those relationships and you have a team around you, right, you can get things like this done. So you wanna add more to this, uh, Joe? Yeah, so now, that we're here, what would be next? Let's, we want to Q&A, I guess. Yeah. Anybody got any questions? Now, now let's, open let's open up, let's open up, let's open up for some questions from Can the audience. Let me stop it, Joe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So we're here, uh, we, we went through the property, you saw the befores, and now you're seeing a lot of the during. So any, any questions you may have, we are ready to answer. Thank you. Thank you, Sheik. Shaik. Thank you. So, so me and Jay is ready to answer any questions on the strategies. So Yvonne, you can start reading. Or Ron. Okay, let's see. Let's scroll up. Hey, Yvonne, I don't see any questions yet. That's amazing. Not one question? That's impossible. I don't believe that. There was one earlier where someone was asking where did you um, purchase the property. Okay. So, so yeah, the, this we're in New York. So this is Hempstead, Long Island. This is New York. Okay. You're coming in. Um, what is the hardest part of wholesaling? I, 
so I, from my perspective, it's finding the property. So a lot of people want to get into wholesaling because they just hear that, oh, you know, you don't need money and you don't need credit. But what you may want to invest in is um, having a system or a process on how to find the property. So yeah, all in all, the, the process sounds easy, sounds, you know, something you could figure. It's very simple, but what the most challenging part is the effort it takes to find the property, right? Because if you don't even know how to run the numbers properly, if you're like, oh, I got a deal, I'm going to wholesale it. But if you don't know how to run the numbers to wholesale to actually show the, actually, and usually the fix and flipper or the buy and hold it, if you don't know how to show what's in it for them as we did, right? How? And then to Vanessa, you know, give it up to her, she was able to find the property using the MLS. So there's a lot of properties out there for sale, but you have to have enough meat so that, yeah, you can earn your little percentage of it and then leave space for them. So your risk level is a lot less, but your effort is a lot higher. Right, this is true. Now, finding the property is definitely the hardest. Getting inventory, getting inventory. We usually get a lot of people that say, hey, we gotta find buyers first. Like wholesale is, is, is yeah, buyers, a buyer's yes. list. Right. But let me tell you, the buy, if you have a good deal, the buyers are gonna come to you. Right. So if that's, yeah, you gotta have inventory. Yeah, yeah, Ruben. Yeah, you definitely. can spend a lot of time finding, oh, I got a buyer, I got a buyer. The buyer's gonna be like, okay, well, what, what property, what do you got for me? And then you're like, oh, well, I'm just creating my buyer's list. The buyer's like, all right, well, when you get something, let me know. Until then, so what do you, you know, you, you, you're basically wasting a lot of valuable time finding them. There's buyers everywhere, but there's not inventory everywhere if you're not searching properly. So that's, that's a key, key thing to learn. All right, so the next question comes from Gozell. Why did Vanessa ask for a 10K assignment fee? Come answer that, Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa. <laughs> no. So say the question one more time, um, Yvonne, please. Why didn't Vanessa ask for a 10K assignment fee? Okay, so at the time of acquiring the property, the numbers were a little tough in terms of um, assignment fee, finding the buyer, because even though we had already, I had already gone with the agent down on finding, on the, you know, the final, okay, this is the price they want to settle on, that was a big push. And even getting to the 230 was um, was kind of like that last, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Um, you know, there was a lot of pushback essentially with the buyer, with the seller in terms of how much they would want to go down because they still had mortgage on it, you know, they still had things that they needed to pay for and at the end they wanted to come out with something which they didn't really. So at the time 5k seemed um, reasonable because the numbers again were so tight. You know, if the end profit would have been more like 50, 55,000, then I think it would have been a little bit more attractive at the time when I was looking for a buyer for them to for me to request a 10k. So basically what she's saying is she wasn't well, being greedy, I right? Yes, so I wasn't. As, as, a, as a wholesaler, right? And remember, this is also her first deal. So the way she ran the numbers, she said, okay, this makes sense. And for her, yes, you want to make a little income on it. But for her, her more pride and joy was to say, hey, I got my first deal done. So she wasn't going to be greedy. And then she was also having negotiation challenges because the person who wanted, the seller wanted to get rid of it as soon as possible. They had been going through other challenges with other people. And remember, this is before the COVID situation hit, right? So this was back October, November, December, all in a lot of time gets taking place with negotiating back and forth. So through that time period, she just was like, listen, I'm happy with this. I'm okay with it. And that's how it happened. The reason we were able to make it happen other ways is because of the fact that our community, I don't think any other like typical investor would have, would have taken on this property seeing the spread. But the fact that, again, they had their own construction company. It was in the middle of COVID. They just wanted to get something done as well. We were able to make it happen. And to what Jason is saying, it's true because we've had that conversation that it, for me, especially since it was my first it wasn't necessarily about the money, it was about learning. It was about, okay, how do I get my first deal? How do I figure it out? What's the learning process? What's the steps? And then, you know, kind of cross that line. So even if, and I'll be honest, even if I came out with a little less, whatever, for me, it's about, okay, now I know what to do the next time around 
it'll be easier to find deals the next time around and the next time around you know I can then ask for more money I have you know I can negotiate more money mm -hmm. but the money wasn't my first it wasn't my drive when I was looking there you go okay so next question is coming from uh, Ken Bernard were there, up, Ken? were there any assignment clause to your original contract um, so when I did it, there wasn't, and that's just because, again, because of our community and, you know, everyone being in the community, we know each other, you know, for me, I had that level of trust in when I brought it to Jason and Joe, but um, generally what you would do is that you would have an assignment contract. So if I went through the regular steps, I would have went into contract that I would have had an assignment contract that I had Jason and Joe sign, and that would have, um, is what would have, you know, provided me my assignment fee, but then given them the property. But I personally, in this deal, did not, but you should. Um, next question from Mr. Johnson. Can you explain what it is in the holding costs? What's in the holding costs? So P, right, principal, interest, taxes, insurance. And the, the, the holding cost also is the amount of time. When, when, we first, when we're first doing the property, so what we learn when we're, um, when we, when we're first doing the property, we figure we're, we're putting out six months, maybe six to 12 months that we're going to hold it for the construction. Because remember, the first half of this deal was for us to be doing this work and being responsible for all the work that you're seeing right now. So we were going to be responsible. So we we figured in our holding course, while we're using, we were going to be using what we call a, a hard money lender for the repairs. That way, we got to factor in that length of time in terms of just price. Because if you're holding the property, you got to pay your hard money. There you go. All right. So interest on that part. Yeah, it's definitely interest. And then you got to pay your insurance for the first, you know, the utilities to have the, you know, electric on while you're working in here, all that good stuff. Right. So you learn how to calculate your holding costs when you're doing a flip. So in our system, what we learned is how to calculate holding costs in a flip. P-I-T-I, like Jason said, and the amount of time that you're holding it with the repairs and the taxes and, you know, all of that. This one is from Ari. How do you evaluate the ARV? Well, the ARV is 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 after repair value. So what we learn how to do? What was the person's name again? RV? Ari. 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 So the, to ARV is, is we do comp comparables in the neighborhood. So there's a thing called comps, right? And I got everybody helping me out with this one. So there's a thing called comps. And if you're learning for the first time what an ARV is, you learn how to do comparables, other similar properties, just like this one that sold for a certain price. Um, the next one is from Ruben. How's the market currently? How's the market currently? Are banks comfortable now? I would say yes. Because the, the market, the real estate market, uh, the condition of the economy right now is, I want to tell everybody, it's not because of the real estate market, it's other factors. And real estate has become even more important for people now. You know, more people want to live in their dream home because you never know, tomorrow's not promised. Even more so now, we, we got a wake up call. So, Banks are lending and real estate is still happening. You can just see that it's it's not it's not too much of a problem. There's a few tweaks, but overall, um, the market is, is still booming. So I, I could piggyback on that. So it's a, one of our partners within the business, his name is uh, Jerry Willie. Good guy to look up. Um, he, he's a VP of a mortgage company. Right now, we just went to see him maybe, what was that, we went like two or three weeks ago? We was at his office, right? Talking with him. He said that the, the demand right now is so crazy that he, he's looking to hire people 
because they're so backloaded on loans, mortgages being processed right now, right? So it's actually insane right now. He said usually they do like a billion dollars and from loans and stuff like that in a year, he said they're looking to basically hit the billion mark in another like maybe like three months. And they're on back order and the rates are at like two, 2.5 to 3%. So yes, like now is actually the time. So banks are definitely, they're bombarding people with the loans at this point. We're gonna change this one now. Um, this one is from Neville Chum. After acquiring a property, is there a general time frame of buying and selling, thus receiving profits? So good question, Neville. Um, it, it depends on the repairs, right? So it, all, it always, that's one thing we like to say a lot. It depends. You need more information, you need more factors. Like how, how much you put in as far as repairs into the property? How good are your contractors? Like what's going on? you know, in that area? Are you putting high end? Are you putting medium levels um, repairs into the property? So it really depends on the nature of work that you're putting into the property. So we kind of estimate, you know, usually, and this is just typical numbers, fix and flip, you say four to eight months, four to six months to do a flip. Anything over that's what we consider a rehab. So eight months to a year, you might have to pull permits, right? So of course that's gonna take longer. Um, so it, it really depends on the project that's being done. Okay. Um, this question is from Ken. Did you have a double close? Yes and no, right? <laughs> yes, we didn't actually double close per se. Like um, Vanessa kind of mentioned, there was no assignment contract with her, so to speak. It was just all based off of trust and the relationship we cultivated. So there was no way that we were gonna stiff her by any means because we're people of integrity, so we don't operate that way. We basically wholesaled the property to you know the other investors and we just basically said, hey, we already agreed to this amount and we made sure that she got her five grand. So what you learn is this, um, closing means that somebody has to, what they call, take title, right? right? So what happened was, Usually, in a, sometimes you learn in a wholesale, if someone, to close it, that means you take title. So usually, a, a double close happens in a short sale scenario. So you can learn more about a short sale scenario where the bank is selling the property. So the bank wants to see it close, mm -hmm. and then the next person can purchase it. But what we did, was they call it an open title um, transaction. So the title never closed in one entity. So you learn, if you learn more about wholesaling, right? And we have a system that teaches us more about wholesaling, you would understand when there's a double close and when there isn't a double close. Good question. Great question. This next question comes from Kevin Price. Great advice. Can you explain the holding cost? Well, we went, we went over that already. Um, Ruben is asked, okay, inventory, cap, I like the shirts. <laughs> I like the shirts too, bro. Is the merch available? <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneur mindset, that's all you need. All right. Gotta have um, this to do this. Ruben says, share the plate. Um, Shanique says, yes, auntie, okay, that's peace. You're never kidding. Yes, auntie. Um, all right, peace, we all gotta eat, love. Okay, does Vanessa work a full-time job or have a family? Good question. <laughs> right on cue. <laughs> there she go. Um, I do, actually, I have, I have two jobs and I'm a single mother of a three-year-old. So it's, you know, Life is very busy. Life is very, it's busy. I don't want to use the word tough, but it's, it's very busy. It's always, something is always happening, always going either with my two jobs or with my son. Um, but that doesn't stop me, essentially. So, you know, it might take me a little longer to find wholesale deals or to find a deal in general in terms of um, my time. But what I try to do is manage my time. I still, this is what I want to do. I love real estate. I want the, I want to quit my nine to five and both jobs, and I want this to be my full time thing. So, 
with that, that and my son drives me to push myself to do what I need to do and, um, you know, make things happen. So even with everything that was going on, I was still able to find this deal. I'm working on finding another deal. So life for you or for me may be busy, but you just have to know that you, if you go after what you want, go after your dreams, it can definitely happen. And her son Noah is on the line right yeah. now watching. Uh, with his, with, with yeah, with with my sister. Yeah, with my sister, his aunt, yeah. What's up, What's up auntie? <laughs> They're online right now watching. So that was a good question. Great auntie? question to ask. Perfect timing. Love it. Okay, Sheldon says, What's up, Vanessa? What up, Sheldon? Sheldon says, Community. Um, Kevin, uh, I like that. Money was not your drive. Education is what I call priceless. Yes, 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 yes Kevin. We yes. put the knowledge before the money. If you have the right knowledge, the money is just a back, a byproduct of it all. Um, this is from Stacy. Joe, are you guys cash buyers? How can I purchase a shirt? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. Look, look, as an investor, yes, we we buy property. Do you have a property for sale? We definitely buy property. In essence, we are cash buyers, hundred percent. Yes. So, and then let me add, a cash buyer means that we're not getting a convent, a regular mortgage that takes three months to close. So what we are able to do within our system is close faster with um, less restriction on the property. So we can buy a property in bad condition, right? So that's what a cash buyer would mean, that we are able to do it a lot faster, a lot faster than waiting for an approval from some type of a mortgage situation. This is asset-based purchasing. And, and let's be clear here, everybody. So people always, you know, get caught up on the word cash buyer. You know, you have to have the cash on hand, right? So typically I don't even have the cash on hand, but I can still purchase a property. So what it is is a lot of people, you know, are, are stumped, stumped, you know, get confused. Oh, I gotta have the capital, I have to have the money. That's one of the main reasons that stop people from doing real estate. But what we learned through our systems and education, you don't necessarily, it doesn't have to be your money. Again, OPM, other people's money. And the other person's money, you know, doesn't have to be, you know, a person. It could be a bank. So for example, like I'll use credit or I'll use, you know, banks, credit cards, 0% APR to go get property, right? And these are things that we've learned that, you know, you just may not understand or know. You might use somebody's self-directed IRA to go out and do a deal. You know, you can use your own 401k IRA to go do deals. That's cash, right? You're still coming to the table with it, but it's not necessarily yours. So just understand, a lot of it's a shortage of people who have the right knowledge on how to access the money. All right. Ruben says, Joe, we can shout you out. Um, Javine says, true talk at Kevin Price. Ruben says, hard money and interest. Okay, and this next question is coming from Sheldon. How did you end up with the 15K profit again? And what was it, what was it a team member that ended up with the property? Well, ask the question again. So Okay. So how did you guys end up with the 15k profit? How did you end up with the 15k profit again? Okay. And what was it? What was it? All right. Let's start, let's start with the 15. The, with the first. The first. Okay. The first. Question. The first question. The 15 was basically we we created when you learn how to wholesale. We created the 15 out of thin air. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, profit and produce we, that purchase. Right. We we had we had the room. Once you learn, we have a way. Like I said, if you one thing you're gonna do to concentrate on. If you learn one thing today, if you're able to do it the way we do it, then you can do it too. So what that means is that we have a system to create profits like 15k, right, on a deal, on an assignment deal. Plus plus profits for her, you understand? So we're, we learn how to create that. So my question to you is, do you want to learn how to create that type of, for your business, that right. type of money? It's all in business. the equity, 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 it's all in the equity. 
The difference between the ARV and the purchase price, that's all equity. So you gotta tap into that in order to create the profit. And that's what exactly what we did. And what was the next part of that question, Yvonne? The next part of that question, he says, and what was it a team member that ended up with the property? Yes. Yeah, it was another team member who ended up who basically fixing and flipping it right now. Right, so we have what what what, what what's the name of it? We have a ecosystem. Right? We have a whole team, an ecosystem that um, some of you may be able to be a part of if, you, if, you, if, if this is something that you're interested in doing. Uh, we have a system to create this whole transaction from looking for the property to wholesaling the property to flipping the property to creating profits all in between all of that. Right? So we have that. 